In this video, we're going to explore editing text in much more detail. And so I came back to this original um, design here that had the different types of text that um, we focused on in this section. And so here I'm going to just talk a little bit more about the different ways to utilize the editing features and some of the things that you might want to do when you're working with text. So first I'm going to focus on standard text here and most of the editing options are the same. We've talked about the properties box and the things that you can do inside of the properties box for lettering like changing the different height, the line spacing and all of that. If you're not familiar with that you can go back and watch the video on the specific types of text and especially the standard lettering video. Um, but in here, we're going to go a little bit deeper in the editing of it. So if I select lettering here, you can see that it is text because my text tool does appear in the properties box. And you can see in the sequence view, it does say text lettering. Now I'm in the standard edit mode because I don't have the text tool highlighted. So when I'm in the standard text mode, I get same options I would if I was working with any embroidery object that isn't text, if that makes sense. So all these little tools around the selection box I can access, I can go right into editing, which you can see it doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't is because I'm in text mode or I'm working with text and text is kind of a confined or a container of letters and so it's like treated as like one object as opposed to individual objects which would be each letter so if i right mouse click and i go to edit text that's when i get into the special editing features of a font or of a letter uh, text and so when i go into it you'll notice that i have options that are around the outside box of the lettering. And then I have options inside in between letters and on top of letters. So let's just take a look at them. We did discuss a little bit in the videos, these little orange rectangles and these blue diamonds, the blue diamonds will space between letters. So, if I click on this one, it's going to affect the T and the S, but everything else is going to stay the same. So if I want to adjust the spacing between the T and the A, I click the diamond that's in between the T and the A and I drag it. Notice that everything else drags that's to the right of it also moves. Okay. That's very important. And, um, it's a very nice feature because you don't have to spend as much time editing text because most of the time you're only wanting to focus on a couple letters and you're not wanting to have to change the spacing between all. It's just there's some of them that will look better if they're closer or further apart. For example, this E next to the T is fine. This T next to the T is okay, uh, but I might want to change that. But the lettering in between here is fine, but I don't like this. There looks like there's too much space. So this is a time where I might want to just affect the E next to the L and keep the other things the same. If I want a little bit more distance between these T's, I can do that. So there's a little bit more separation there, but that's how you work with spacing between letters. And if you want to just change a letter itself, you can click on the orange square. And it's going to bring a box around a letter. Okay. So that's letting me know that now I'm, I've kind of isolated this letter. Now I can do something with it. So I can rotate it. And you'll notice that there's a rotate in the bottom left as well. So I can use either one to rotate it. Then I can also use these in the upper left and lower right to resize the letter. And see how it keeps it like centered. So I could make that a bigger S if I wanted to. And the other option that I have is I can click on this 
um, orange square and I can just drag the letter anywhere I want. If I wanted to start up here, I could do that. If I wanted this A to be offset and be up a little bit higher, I could do that. If I want this D to go lower, I could do that. You can move it anywhere you want and it will hold it in that position. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that you only want to do this after you get the lettering for the most part where you want it. Because if I come over here and I change the font to something different, it's going to reset it and back to a default for each letter. So that's just something to keep in mind is that you want to get the lettering kind of how you want it. And before you start manipulating things like the letter height or the positioning of letters. And that's just something that you need to be aware of. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to get it back to like kind of original, which means I got to get this S back. So I just undo to, um, a bunch of times. So now let's focus on the features around the box here. So you can see I have this that if I put my eye and my cursor over it, I can click and drag and it's making the text proportionally larger or smaller. Um, and that's kind of a nice way to keep everything proportional and nice, but resizing it smaller or larger. Let's go ahead and look at the, this, uh, little icon here, the circle. That's just lets me rotate it very standard. And now let's look at this lower right hand corner, this little like arrow that's going to allow me to stretch the lettering, either make it wider stretched out or make it skinnier. And it is affecting the width of each letter, as you can see. Now let's look over here in the bottom left. If I click and drag it, it's going to let me slant the letters so I could make them a little bit more slanted if I wanted to. Um, and then let's take a look at these, these little dots in the middle. If I click and drag it up, notice that it's stretching it in a curved fashion only at the top, but it is stretching the lower letters too along with it, but it's just what it's doing is curving it here, but keeping it straight there. Now I could come into this one and I could curve it up or I could even curve it down. So you can see that you have the options to do some pretty um, weird things, I should say, with the text. You can really get it to follow a shape in a way. Um, however you want to play around with it, you have the ability to um, play with these and, and get your text um, kind of more on a curve from the center. Um, so it's just something that you can do um, with the lettering. Now, the other thing that you can do too is when you're in this text edit mode, if I right mouse click, there is this envelope option. And this envelope option lets me access templates basically for working with the shape of the lettering. So if I go into here and I choose a pennant to the right, you'll notice that when I hit apply here, it's going to be taller on this side than it is on this side. It's kind of a pennant um, shape. If I right click and I go to envelope and I can do pennant left and it's going to be the opposite. Let me right click again. There's a lot of different options here and this is like a, um, just a con, <clears throat> excuse me. This was just a convex on the top and a concave on the bottom. You can do a double convex and you'll see here that it just adjusts it a little bit on the top and the bottom. There's a lot of different options. You can play around with them. They're just presets. You're not going to break anything. If you want to get it back to normal, if you don't like what you're finding, you can just go to reset frame. Um, and again, that was just a right mouse click and reset frame and that brought it back to a normal setting. 
So some of the other things that you might want to do with text is you might want to break it apart. Now, breaking apart text, the thing you need to keep in mind with it is the moment you break it apart, it's no longer uh, adjustable like regular text is. So let me just do it and just to show you right here. I'm gonna, I right mouse click on the lettering and I choose break up text. The moment that I do that, I want to show you in the sequence view what happens. So I'm coming over here to the sequence view. Now I have each letter as a separate object. So if I select one of them, I no longer have the properties box for text because it's no longer keyboard text in the software. Now this is just an individual object inside of this design. And so I don't have the text. I can't right click and go to edit text. I can't do anything because now it's no longer viewed as text. If I go back and I undo it, I'm going to take a look in here. You can see that it shows that it's all text, all one thing. If I select it now, right click, I can go to edit text and it's going to allow me to edit everything. But the moment that I break it apart is the moment that it's no longer treated as keyboard lettering inside of the software. Now, some of the reasons why I might want to do that is I might want to have a little bit more control over the individual letters themselves. So by doing this, now I can come in and I can change angles. I can change the shape, start points, end points. I get the, the regular satin edit features for a satin tool when I break it apart, as you can see here. And so I'm in the shape edit mode. I might want to manipulate some things this way. By doing this, it allows me, by breaking it apart, it allows me to do that. And I will be honest with you, I break up the text the majority of the time because I want to change some kind of a property that I can't do while it's in a text mode. But the important thing to keep in mind is you want to make all the changes that you possibly can while it's still in the text mode because you get things like working with the spacing between letters that it's just easier to do that when it's still text. I only convert it or break it apart after I've made every single change that I want to make to the text that is available under the text options. That from that point, then I'll break it apart and do the final adjustments that I need to. So again, by breaking it apart, you're now taking it out of text mode and now you get regular um, properties for working with the object. So one of the things that is kind of unique too about breaking apart text is I'm going to take this T for instance, I'm going to drag it. Notice that there is the column up at the top that goes left to right, and then you have the regular part of the T. There's basically three pieces here. You have the upper part, the, the part that goes across the T right here, and then you have this lower part. But you'll see that it's still showing as one object. So if I really want to get in and I need to edit it even further, I will probably want to come in here and break it apart again. So by doing that now I can control each individual piece, but it's actually really nice that when you break apart text, it will keep the letters kind of combined together at first because I will only break it apart even further if I have to. And that's only if I'm really needing to modify something here and it's only wanting to affect this area or just this area. But the important thing to understand here is you have the ability to really get in and edit lettering as much as you want. And if you can't get something, you know, quite the way you want it, you might need to break apart the lettering and you might even need to break apart an individual letter and get it into multiple pieces so that you can modify it even more. Um, you're not limited with the editing features of working with standard text because you can break it apart. 
So those are some of the things that I will do with lettering um, quite often, actually. But again, you want to be careful when doing that because you're getting it out of a text mode and you lose some of the editing capabilities that you might be expecting. So when working with other letters, they're all pretty much the same. Um, we we sp focused on the special things for circular lettering um, when we did the video on circular lettering. And same with vertical and on a path. The only things, um, we only focus on the things that were um, unique to each one. So when it comes to the other editing, it's all pretty much the same. Um, you have, if I go into edit text, you still have the diamonds, the blue diamonds and the orange squares. And the only difference is what you can do with circular text and it's covered in the videos. So, but you do have the ability to, um, break apart text and, um, and change it and do whatever you need to do. And you just kind of have to play around with it to make sure that you can get the text where you want it, but don't be scared to play. Um, make some changes, just bring in, uh, open a new design page and just bring text in and, and keep it with my text and just start editing it and start playing with it, seeing what you can and can't do with it. Um, the more you learn about lettering, the better, the better you get at manipulating lettering, the more success you will have in your designs. So take time to play with each text tool. Um, talking about the standard, circular, vertical, text on a path, monogram, and even importing true type text. Don't be scared to play around. <laughs>